Hi and welcome to Sitam Church Online, this being the Youth Cafe. My name is Patrick Kuchio, the Head of Missions at Christ is the Answer Ministries. Have you ever considered the power behind this small three-letter word, ASK, A-S-K, ASK? It's phenomenal, it's profound once you begin to leverage on the power of asking. This three-letter word, ask, is loaded with power. And I invite you to join me in this conversation as we explore the power behind this three-letter word, ask. The Bible tells us in the book of James, uh, chapter 4, verse 1 to 3, What causes fights and quarrels among you? Don't they come from your desires that battle within you? You want something, but you don't get it. You kill and covet, but you cannot have what you want. You quarrel and fight. You do not have because you do not ask God. When you ask, you do not receive. Because when you ask with wrong motives, that you may spend what you get on your pleasures. James 4, verse 1 to 3. There are three fundamental facts about asking or about praying. The first fundamental fact about praying or about asking is that there are some things that God will never do unless you ask him. I repeat, there are some things that God will never do unless you ask him. The Bible tells us in the book of James, you have not because you ask not, or you do not have because you do not ask. So the first fact is this, there are some things that God will never do until you and I ask him. The second fact about prayer or about asking is that there are some things that God will never do however much you ask him. I repeat, there are some things God will never do however much you ask him. The Bible tells us in the book of James. When you ask, you receive not, because you ask with the wrong motives. So there are some things, number one, that God will never do until you and I ask him. Then there are some things that God will never do, however much you ask him. But thirdly, there are some things that God does whether you and I ask him or not. I repeat, there's some things that God will do whether you and I ask him or not. The Bible tells us in the book of Matthew chapter 5, verse 43 to verse 45, you have heard that it was said, love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, that you may be sons of your father in heaven. He causes his son, S-U-N, to rise on the evil and the good and sends rain on the righteous and the unrighteous. Jesus was arguing this fact or about asking. And he said, you know what? There are some things that the Heavenly Father does, whether you and I ask him or not, because he's sovereign. For instance, he will cause the sun to shine, not because you've asked him, but because it's in his plan. He has set the sun in motion. He will cause the rain to fall, not because you've asked him, but because he has decided to send rain in season. It is true that at times God answers prayer for rain, prayer for sunshine, but there are things that, laws that are in motion that will happen whether you pray or not. For instance, I do not know of people who spend a lot of time praying that the sun will rise from the east and set in the west. It's a given. It's a given. It's a law that is in motion. So back to the three facts about asking. There are some things that God will never do until you ask him. The book of James is a very practical book. 
in Christian living. And James the Apostle writes these fundamental truths about asking and he says, it is possible that you are in a place where you do not have, for one simple reason, you have never asked of it. He argues and says, you have not because you ask not. Is it possible to find yourself in a place where you've never experienced or encountered something for one simple reason? You never asked. You have never asked. There is power in this three-letter word, ask. The politicians have leverage on this word, ask. They ask for our votes. They crisscross the nation asking for votes. And you and I find ourselves giving them votes because they've asked for votes. It is very unlikely, very unlikely, that you'll give a vote to one who has not asked of you, who has not articulated his vision, who has not communicated clearly what they're about. So there's power in asking. Marketers have leveraged on the power of this word, ask. They ask us to buy their products and with a lot of, lots of passion because there is power in this three-letter word. Now, I may not know what you're going through as an individual. I may not know where you're at in your journey, life's journey, but I came to remind you that there's a three-letter word that can unlock the heavens in your life. Ask. One time Jesus spoke to the disciples in John 16 verse 24 and he told them, until now you have not asked for anything in my name. Then he tells them, ask and you will receive and your joy will be made complete. The disciples had been with Jesus. They had seen him open blind eyes. They had seen him feed the multitudes. They had seen him cleanse the lepers. They had seen him transfigured. They had experienced miracle after miracle, but had never come to a point of simply asking. And Jesus tells them, guys, up until now, you have not asked anything in my name. Ask and you will receive, and your joy will be made complete. So there's some things that God will never do until you ask him to do so. And when you ask him, ask him specifically. Not in generalities, but specifically. But second fact, there are some things that God will never do, however much you and I ask him. You see, the Bible tells us in the book of James, when you ask, James chapter 4 verse 3, when you ask, you do not receive. When you ask, you do not receive. On one end, when you ask, you receive. But when you ask, you do not receive. Why, he says? Because you ask with wrong motives. If you are given to asking of God, but with wrong motives, if the end of your asking, the end of your praying, is a wrong ill motive, it doesn't matter how much you spend time asking. Whether you spend a whole night asking, and you're asking for the wrong motive, I'm sorry to disappoint you. It's a waste of time. Whether you go on a three-day fast, a seven-day fast, and a, or a 40-day fast, but you're asking with the wrong motives, I'm sorry, you probably are wasting your time. So when you ask, you and I must ask with the right motive. Otherwise, there are some things that God will never do, however much you and I ask. So when you ask, interrogate Evaluate the motive. Why am I asking God for this particular aspect? Why am I making this specific prayer? Why am I really asking? Is it that God will be glorified? Or is it that I will be satisfied? When God is glorified, you will be satisfied. But if the ultimate end is that God will be glorified, that's the right motive. So ask and ask correctly because there's something called asking amiss. Don't ask amiss. Probably some of you are wondering, could this be the reason why some of my prayers have remained unanswered for many years? It could be. It could be. Pay attention to the motive. But finally, asking. 
There are some things that God does, whether you and I ask him or not, because he's sovereign. Theologians call this God's general grace. How God causes the sun to shine on both the righteous and the unrighteous, how God sends rain to both the righteous and the unrighteous, how God just releases his protection over those who fear him and those who do not fear him. That's general grace. But there's special grace that those of us who are in a relationship with God can enjoy some unique benefits because of the relationship we have with him. So whether you're a beneficiary of gen general grace or special grace, learn to ask of God. You know, I find this last point very sobering because there are times we Christians behave as, behave as if all that we experience in life uh, is a result of our asking, is a, as a result of our praying. But the fact is this, there are some things that you have going on in your life that have nothing to do with your praying. There are some blessings that God brought your way that have nothing to do with your praying. There's some joy that you're experiencing that has nothing to do with your praying. God of his own volition, God in his own wisdom and in his own providence decided to bless you with that joy, with that opening, with that breakthrough. However, the three facts remain. There are some things that God will never do until you and I ask him. Number two, there are some things that God will never do however much you ask him. And thirdly, there are some things that God will do whether or not you ask. So what then is the conclusion of the matter? I can feel your frustration. So what? So what? If there's some things that God will never do until we ask of him, if there's some things that God will never do however much we ask him, and if there's some things that God will always do whether you and I ask him or not, the conclusion is this. Ask. Just ask. That is why the Bible tells us, Ask and it shall be given. Knock and the door shall be opened. Seek and you shall find. Matthew 7.7 7. In other words, what God was saying, keep asking, keep knocking, keep seeking. Don't give up. You may feel like you've been asking and asking and asking, provided you're asking with the right motive, keep asking. Provided you are knocking with the right motives, keep knocking. Provided you're seeking with the right motive, keep seeking. Because he who asks is answered. He who knocks, the door shall be opened to him. And he who seeks, finds. Therefore, ask. Let's continue this conversation. Uh, once again, I invite you to join us as we continue this conversation on our social media platforms. Uh, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, please get in touch with us on our Facebook page, on our Twitter handle, and on Instagram. We are happy to continue this conversation on asking. The Lord bless you richly. My name is Patrick Kuchio. This being the Youth Cafe at Sitam Church Online.